Good evening children. Today we shall start a new chapter that is mercantilism and advent of the European traders to India. And this is chapter number 12 and it's a, hist a history chapter. Now what we shall learn or discuss in this chapter is about the nature of European trade and commerce why European traders came to India then we should also learn about European business establishment in various parts of India then we also learn about the social economic and cultural changes that came about during the European colonization of India and how the European traders started to intervene in the internal matters of our country and at last they got hold of the power, political power in India. So we'll discuss all these things in this chapter. Now for this we have to go back. Now the period from the end of the 17th and in the beginning of the 18th century now it was at this time that the Indian history changed because the period was marked by two most important changes. What happened was that in this period that is in the 17th and the 18th century one was the change in the political scenario of India and the other one was that the socio-economic life of the people of India. Now we have read in class 7 about Mughal. If you remember that how Mughal had established a very strong empire in India. And that was by Babur, if you remember. And then later on several Mughal king came like Humayun, then Akbar, Jahangir, Shah Jahan, Aurangzeb. These are a few great Mughal rulers who ruled India. But the Mughal Empire started to decline when Aurangzeb became the king. Because at that time, many local rulers or chief revolted against Aurangzeb because of his religious policy because he wanted to impose his own religious belief or faith into non-Islamic people that is upon the Hindus and because of which the Jat, the Sikh, the Satnamis, they all revolted and captured their own territory and declared independent from the Mughal Empire and then Soon after Aurangzeb's death in 1707 AD, his sons, they were not very strong and apart from that, there was war of succession. You know, when brothers of the deceased, oh, sorry, sorry, the sons of the deceased kings, when they fight among themselves to claim the throne. And thus, the large Mughal Empire started to disintegrate and various other powers in India like the Maratha was one came to power. So taking this as an advantage because the Mughal Empire started to disintegrate that is break down small independent state emerge. So taking this as an advantage Many European nations, especially the East India Company, they came to India for trade and establish their business in India. Now before starting about or discussing about the East India Company here, we must know that in fact East India Company before them many other European companies 
had come to India. Now let's go back to the Mughal time. Even in fact, even before that, India had a very good trade and commerce with Western countries. Now at that time, most of the merchants used to come to India or the merchants of India used to go to the Western countries through land. But in 1453, Constantinople, that is the present Istanbul, was captured by Turks. And because of that, the Turks, they closed the trade route to the east and the European had no other way to come to India. And as a result, in the year 1498, Vasco da Gama, a Portuguese sailor, for the first time discovered a sea route to India around, from around the Cape of Good Hope and reached Calicut. Now, Calicut is a place in Kerala. Then after the Portuguese, the Dutch, Sp uh, the Danes, the Netherlands, that is, sorry, uh, that is the Dutch. So they all also came to India via sea route, established their business in several parts of India. Now these European countries that I've mentioned, like the Portugal, then the Netherlands, Britain, France, Denmark. So all these countries came to India because they were very much attracted by India's wealth and as well as the products that were produced in India were in great demand in the European countries. They come, they buy these products, Indian products at a very low rate or a cheap rate and then they sell them in the European markets at higher rates and earn huge profits. Few of the Indian goods which were in great demand in the European nations were Indian spice, the spices, silk cloths, metal goods, gold, silver and various or different kinds of precious stones. So, in the year 1599 AD, some English traders, they form a private company and they named the company as East India Company. Uh, and they created this company so that they can carry out trade with the Southeast Asian countries. And India was also one of the country that falls in the Southeast Asian countries. So, as a result, the very next year, that is in the 1600, the East India Company got the permission from Queen Elizabeth I to carry out trade with the Eastern countries for 15 years. And in between, no other company from England would be able to come or to do trade with any other Southeast Asian countries that is except the East India Company. So after entering India that is in the year 1640 AD the East India Company established the first business setup in Chennai that and that is Madras that was called at the time. In the very beginning the East India Company did not face any competition from the eastern boundaries but later on when other European con companies or countries started to enter India and thus where when the competition started and thus later on there was also war among these European nations the Portuguese the Netherlands France now from the 16th to the end of the 18th century the economy 
in Europe was controlled by mercantilism. Now, what is mercantilism? Mercantilism means the control of the entire trade and business or any other economic activities by the government. That means the government had the full control in all the economic activities. And in those, in those days, the European nations, they laid more stress on foreign trade and they gave importance to earning of gold and silver easily and through trade and commerce. But in India, we know that many other European nations also had their eye to come and capture the market. And as I have told you that India was very rich and apart from being rich there are or there were many products which were produced in India that were in great demand in the European market. So these European powers they were attracted towards India's wealth as well as the produce or the goods produced in India. Now, why the European powers were attracted to India? So, we can point out a few. Firstly, the Indian goods were in great demand in the Western countries, such as gold, silver, spices, silk, and other precious stones. Secondly, European nations were rich and they produced plenty of goods, industrial goods. And these European nations that I have mentioned, Portugal, Spain, or Netherlands, Britain, France, Denmark, they don't want to import goods from other countries, but instead they want to sell. And they need a market to sell off their products. And India was an idle country where they can sell their products. That's why they were at attracted. And lastly, as I've mentioned, India was a rich country. So the European countries thought that they could make a huge profit by coming and selling off their products. So as a result, the economic foundation of the 18th and sorry, 16th and 18th century, that is the countries like England, Netherlands, Spain, Portugal, France, Denmark was mainly based on their imperial policies. Now, what is imperial policy? When a country that is very rich and has military strength, then they dominate or capture the weak countries either by trade and commerce or by war and then expand their business and even make colonies in those countries that is known as imperialism and that is exactly what these European nations did to our countries. They followed the policy of imperialism and captured the market of India. Now let's discuss about where these European nations establish their business. Now, most of these European countries or nation had established their companies and settlement in different parts of India. In the 16th century, the Portuguese established and controlled the part of Goa, Daman and Diu. The Dutch established their companies in Nagapattam, Pulikat. Also, in and, in and around Agra, Surat, Musulipattam, Chuchura. The British had also established their companies in Agra, Surat, Ahmedabad and Baroj. The French also had established their business setup in, in and around also in Musulipattam, 
Pondicherry, Chandannagar, Balchar, and Kasim Bazar. So these are the first pla a few places where these companies or the European nation had established their business in the very beginning. But that too by waging war or defeating each other and capturing territories. There were other European nations also who came to India and tried to establish trade, but they could not. They were the Danes, that is Denmark, the Prussians, the Swiss, and as well as the Austrians. But they could not compete with the superpower of that time, like Portuguese, Dutch, French, and the English. And in fact, the other European powers, like Portuguese, Netherlands and France later on all later on they were also defeated by the East India Company and at last the entire market of in India was under the East India Company so that's all for today the rest we'll discuss in the next class thank you